All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the other side of the coin and welcome back to another live stream bringing you the latest in Chelsea news. We are now just moments away from Chelsea versus Man United match that's going to happen tonight, UK time, I believe. 7, 8, 8, 15 p.m., something like that, I think. So uh, we've got the match preview. We've got the match preview upon us, ladies and gentlemen. Everything that we've said over the past few days, now it's all culminating. It's all coming together for this particular match. We, we have so much to talk about. As I said, from here on in, from here on in till the end of the season, we are going to ride every single news. We are going to be there reacting on every single bit of information. We will be there. We will be there, ladies and gentlemen, for every bit that happens uh, in the football club. As I said, heaps of things to go through, quite a lot of information to go through from the press conference. More nonsense, but more than nonsense, do you know what, ladies and gentlemen? I feel like Pochettino is throwing the players under the bus. Some of the comments that he's made, I feel like he's throwing the players under the bus. So we're going to touch base on that. It feels like maybe there is a bit of a divide between the players and the manager. I don't know. I, I just get that feeling. We'll see. We'll see in this particular match whether the players really fight for him or not. Poch, Poch has come out publicly and said, we need to run. What is missing from our game is running, ladies and gentlemen. Running is what is missing from our game. So we need to run. And um, apparently some of the players, some of the players, they're not, they're not listening to the instructions. The information that Pochettino is trying to convey, they're not listening to it. So it's all mad, you know, it's all mad. And of course, of course, how can we get past the Mason Mount Conundrum, the Mason Mount drama that is taking place at the moment, ladies and gentlemen. How can we get past that? So lots to talk about. Obviously, we want to talk about the match, how I picture the match going. I want to try and see what you guys think how the match is going to go. Me personally, ladies and gentlemen, I don't have a good feeling about this match. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't have a good feeling about this match. I really needed that victory against Burnley. And the fact that we drew against a 10-man Burnley without a manager at our home ground, that's devastated all my confidence. And now this particular fixture, look, it's a game between two, two very ordinary teams. Man United's no, you know, they're not, they're not great. But do you know what the difference with us and Man United is? At least Man United, they, they have the know-how to squeeze out results. Somehow, they're always capable of squeezing out results. We, on the other hand, not only we're rubbish, just like Man United, but we don't squeeze out results. We don't have the know-how. They've got certain players that they can, you know, they can do damage. They can 100% do damage. We, on the other hand, now, our players, they go missing. Our players go missing. So this is what I'm worried about. And, and generally, this, this matchup between Chelsea and Man United, um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't fancy it, man. Like, for some reason, the, the way they play in the transition with pace, it really hurts us. It absolutely hurts us. So... Let's see, man. I don't have a good feeling, but we're going to talk more about the game. Let's see what you guys are saying, first of all, before we go into the news. Big up to each and every one of you guys, by the way. Big up to my man, Chelsea Empire, in the house, nice and early. Hudge, my brother, in the house as well. Kuba, good to see you, Kuba. We've got Dave031, William, super fat Frank. <laughs> Benji, my man. We here. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you are a member of the channel, Make sure you're there pre-match. I'll start the watch along one and a, uh, one hour and um, yeah, one and a half hours. I'll start the match uh, uh, watch along one and a half hours before kickoff. We'll have the final forty-five minutes where we'll we'll get the members to come in and give your opinion. So make sure, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you're a member of the uh, if you're a member of the football club, if you're a member of the channel, 
make sure you're there for the watch along to give your opinion on it. Shivendra, big up to you, my man. The Blues, Dexter, Marcus, Zaid, James Atwood, good to see you, my man. Nehemia, good to see you. Good to see all my regulars here. Great. All right, ladies and gentlemen, smash the like button, number one. Before we get into all the news, all the juicy news that's lined up, smash the like button. That's the first thing. Let's get those likes up to well over 100. Um, and, and if you're here for the first time, subscribe as well. I, I know pretty sh pretty sure uh, very, very soon we'll have more than 100 people. We'll probably reach more than 200. So let's get those likes up to 100 immediately. And if you're here for the first time, subscribe. IOTuber, big up to you, my man. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's let's have a look at the, the news. All right. Okay, first up, ladies and gentlemen, this... This is a particular news um, that's been talked about not that long ago, but now it's coming to fruition. Check this out. It really concerned me listening to Poch say how players these days are so sensitive and to be told to do something they needed fully explained, even a basic such as running. Even as basic such as running. Uh, so much emphasis on running, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to get to that. I'm not the biggest fan of Poch, but it scared me as he insinuated it impeded his work. I don't understand why players are like this, to be honest, and Poch said the same when asked by a reporter. Look, when did, when did running, ladies and gentlemen, when did running or intensity or pressing become the number one trait. Like, as a footballer, running, pressing, intensity, they're, they're the bare minimums. Like, you don't need to coach. You, you don't need a manager or a coach to talk about this. Now, if that is really the issue, now I've been watching Chelsea matches, you know, for God knows how long, especially this season, just like you guys. I'm not really sure whether running is the issue. Okay, maybe we can close down the oppositions a lot more, of course. But all of that, I feel like they're instructions. We don't seem to control matches, you know. Pochettino keeps harping on about running, running, running. Running without any direction is no good either. You're going to get yourself tired and... This is probably one of the big reasons why our players keep getting injured. Some people are comparing how you know Manchester City players run. No, there's a difference. Let me tell you, Manchester City, they control the game with possession. They control only when they lose the ball, they cannot press and they run quickly to get the ball back. They're not just running around non-stop with the ball. No. Manchester City games, if you notice, they're probably in slow-mo because the opposition's sitting deep. It's just pass, sideways, intricacies, trying to find that gap. The only time Manchester City players really put in the hard yards is that when, when, when they don't want the opposition to run away with it. I don't understand why Poch wants our players to just run, 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 run. run they, just just run. Just non-stop run. Brother, we've got players that can control the game. We've got quality technical players that can actually hold the ball and control the game. You see the way we play. It's a basketball game. How can you expect these players to keep running 90 minutes in a basketball game. It's not Liverpool, man. You can only do that if you're Liverpool, if you've got lethal weapons up front. You can only do that if you're Liverpool with Salah, Luis Diaz, Darwin Nunez, these type of players are front who are clinical when 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 they play basketball games. We don't have that type of quality up front. 
And running, running, running is just one way of playing. Like There are other ways of playing football, you know. Now, okay, I get it. That's the way Pochettino wants to play. That's the way. But, but you don't have the personnel to do that. There's really one player that just runs, runs, runs from our team, and that's, that's Gallagher. Facts, Franklin, running without tactics. Well, you're just going to burn your players out. That's not, that, that's not the only way to beat the opposition, you know, by running. This is not some sort of a marathon. There needs to be some level of tactics. And this is where I feel we are losing out. This is where, you know, all the people that still want to keep backing Pochettino, oh, now we need to keep Poch. This is not on Poch. No, th there is a lot that is blamed on Poch. Fundamentally, there's huge flaws in the way we play. Milo K, Miz, that's all he knows. Kilometers, protein shakes, buffing, physicality, b-ball, heights. Look at the profile of players we have, technical ones, and all he thinks about is Forrest Gump, bro, adapt. Yeah, look, it's mad. It's mad. I'm not even surprised if some of the players are like, dude, why am I just running around? Do you know how stupid it sounds to just run around? You have to be smart. You have to know when to switch on the running. And when to, you, you got to feel the game. You don't just run 90 minutes. That's stupidity. You play in phases. But predominantly, you try and hold the ball. The less time the opposition has the ball, the less time they're going to get to score. It's simple philosophy. Bigger teams want to keep the ball as often as possible. I don't like this whole attitude of let's keep running, running, running. This It's, it's, it's insane. Shivendra, Miz, Carl Walker from Man City also spoke the difference between Pochettino's training at Tottenham to Pep's training at Man City. It's not just about running always. Exactly. Carl Walker literally... Not that long ago, went to um, Vive with Five with on Rio Ferdinand's channel saying this. That's the biggest difference. Now, if that's what you want to do, if, if all you want to do is just run, 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 then you need different type of players. You need different type of players. And mind you, your players will get injured often. Because not only you're, you're asking them to run during the matches, of course you're going to ask for them to run in the training ground. Because you can't perform like that in the match if you're not putting in the hard yards in the training ground. Now, this entire you know, time, from, from the time we, uh, we drop points against Burnley till the time we're going to play against Man United, I'm pretty sure these players, because apparently this has been addressed in the dressing room, that you must run. This was one of the flaws against Burnley, apparently, because we didn't run enough. This entire week, leading up to this Man United game, I'm pretty sure all the players did was run, 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 run. They got themselves absolutely burnt out running. Watch match day come against Man United, and we're not going to be fresh. We're going to be all burnt out. We're going to be all burnt out. Emmanuel, I don't like... Poch, pouch. I don't like pouch. <laughs> and he has failed. But running, he means he means your opposition is running away from you. You have to follow. The so-called technical players we have lose ball to oppositions frequently. <sighs> Do you know what? Even the whole conversation about the opposition running away from you, just watch the way Manchester City, when they lose the ball, just watch how all their players a position. Even when in position, you've got to be in certain areas of the pitch where 
you have to anticipate that if you lose the ball, you can pounce straight away. When you have the ball, you can't just be so spread out where um, one mistake and, and, it, and everything collapses. You have to stay compact, close to each other and move in a compact manner. Move, move together like this, wherever you go, close to each other. So you can make close passes, but at the same time, if it gets intercepted, you all can jump in and get the ball back quickly. But in order, in order to stay all close together, you do need technical players that are comfortable. Do you remember the, 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 the classic Barcelona team? The prime Barcelona team. How they counter-pressed the living daylights out of the opposition. They were just so close to each other. There is fundamental issues with the way we play. It's not just about running. If, if, if the situation was that simple, that it's just about running, please, then that could have been solved a long time ago. Kuba, it seems to me that Poch doesn't understand anything or anyone. Every press conference he comes out and the first thing he says is, I don't know or I don't understand whether that's meds or tactics. No, yeah, you're right. It's it's um, it's quite mad. It's quite mad. Maurizio Pochettino fears Chelsea's downfall could be that their mega money stars are too comfortable. Having delivered a speech to his squad this week about slipping standards ahead of Premier League showdown with Manchester United. Now, now, now. Mr. Maurizio Pochettino, slipping standards. Aren't you the guy that's been selling the whole project that this is a new Chelsea? What have I been saying in All You Can Eat Chelsea for the past two to three episodes? The way Maurizio Pochettino keeps talking about, the way Maurizio Pochettino keeps talking about that, how this is the new Chelsea. We need to be patient. This is a process. Now, all of a sudden, you're saying, oh, no, nah, you're too comfortable. You need to deliver. There's been a speech made this week about slipping standards. I said it. If if I was a player and I'm watching my manager talk the way he's talking in the press conference, yeah, I'd, I'd feel very comfortable. And also on top of that, who, the, who are the mega money stars, man? Who are these mega money stars? There's only one mega money star probably, and that's Raheem Sterling. Who's the who are the other men? All of these players are capped. Less than 150,000 a week. Not many of them are even earning that much. Enzo Fernandez is not even up at, at 150,000. So who are these mega money stars? We, we don't have this is what I mean. Poch is throwing these players under the bus. It's not going to look good. Saying his mega money stars are getting comfortable. Who? Who? Who are these mega money stars? Who? Roger Park, big up to you. Ms. Hiring Poch was calculated after Bowley comments. It's Clee Clown Lake ready to tank seasons, not win silverware and turn profit on players over time. A winning manager wouldn't accept this. 100%. 100%. Who would have guessed 80 year contracts would make people complacent? Oh, wait, all the sensible fans did. Yeah, look, I, I get it. The 80 year contracts are, you know, but are we really going to sit here and just say these players are all comfortable? It's, it's a lot deeper than that. Like some of these players were there last season as well. Surely they cannot have this level of shame where they're repeating last season again. I'm not going to buy into this whole, uh, they're all too comfortable. But comfortable about what? Your reputation's getting damaged. Comfortable about what? You're, you're 12th. Chelsea fans, rival fans, pundits, everyone's talking down on every single player besides, just, besides Cole Palmer or Mala Gusto to a certain degree. 
Every other player, everyone talks down on. Getting comfortable about what? Look at the way people talk about Enzo Fernandez now, like he's not even a footballer. Look at the way people talk about uh, Caicedo, like he's he's not even a, a midfielder. Comfortable about what? Look at the way people talk about Raheem Sterling. Look at the way people talk about Gallagher. Look at the way people talk about Jackson. Comfortable about what? I'm not going to just sit here. Look, I'm not lying. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to lie. Like players are culpable. Yeah, of course, players are culpable. But to sit here and say, "Oh, they don't take instructions. They don't want to run. They're too comfortable." Nah, that's a, that's an easy way out. That's an easy way out. I'm sorry. That's an easy way out. Pochettino, what? What? Why were you brought in? Why were you brought in if you can't even have an impact? What, why should I even bother with you? I can't get rid of an entire squad. I can get rid of you. I can't get rid of an entire squad. I'm sorry. And in fact, I did get rid of an entire squad last summer. What? I'm going to do that again this summer. Everyone that I bought, get rid of them again. It can't happen like that. I'm sorry. I need someone who's going to come in and who's going to get the best out of this squad. JC, big up to you, my man. Not going to lie, Miz, I agreed a lot with what Poch said. We have so many kids, I felt he finally spoke up against the board's stupidity. Now, of course, look, I understand from that perspective what he's saying that, look, there's not enough experience. I get that. But... My God, Poch, like, you, did you not have any idea what you were getting into? Did Poch not have any idea what he was getting into? Is this all a surprise? What kind of interview took place when Pochettino was selected? Mind you, the interview process was like for three months. What kind of conversation went down? Why is Poch acting like he doesn't know anything anymore? Why is he all surprised? And yeah, as someone's saying over here, paper's saying Poch just wants the money. But if you if you just want the money, then why are you talking so so much now? Why are you running your mouth now? If it was all, if it, if it is all about the money, why are you running your mouth now? Why are you running your mouth now? You've been brought in to do a job. 12th is not the job. You've been brought in with this young team to at least get a bare minimum sixth finish. You are underperforming as a manager. There is no two ways about that. You are underperforming as a manager. Now you're coming up with excuses. Players don't listen to me. These are mega stars. Mega stars. None of them are mega stars. None of them are mega stars. I'm sorry. You can't get a handle of these players. How are you going to get a handle of experienced players? You can't get a handle of the kids. How are you going to control grown adults? Take responsibility, Mr. Pochettino. Not once, Poch, since he's joined as a manager at Chelsea Football Club, not once has Pochettino taken any responsibility. Never, never have I heard Pochettino come out post-match, pre-match, Ever say, do you know what, guys? It's actually my fault, you know. I gotta do better. I gotta do better. I have to figure out a way how to get the best out of this lot. It's never his fault. Oh, we don't run. Oh, you, you, players don't want to listen. Oh, inexperience. Oh, injuries. Boo-hoo, man. Boo-hoo. You think we're the only team? You think we're the only football club with problems? You think we're the only football club with problems? Well, Brighton don't have problems. Brighton don't have problems uh, uh, with, with Roberto De Zerbi over there complaining. Look at all the teams above us. You think Newcastle don't have problems? 
You think Man United don't have problems? You think West Ham don't have problems? Nah, 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 nah. We're, we're the only ones with problems. We're the only ones with problems and we have a manager that is very good at showcasing all of these problems publicly without stating that there is deficiencies in his way of managing. No, it's always just uh, every everyone else. As I said, I, I'm not saying that the players are not culpable. They are. But you need to look at people that are running the players a lot more. Hajj, I fully agree but with you, but I'm trying to look at from all views, imagining being a 20-year-old given an eight-year deal on even 90K that is setting a really bad precedent for me. Look, I, I don't know, man. I... I'm not gonna lie. Like I, I was, I was on fairly good money when I was young. Like, obviously, I'm not on 90k. Like from normal standards, but I was on good money when I was young. But I wasn't, I wasn't stupid. I knew exactly what to do. Look, I'm not gonna lie. There were times where I splashed the money. Yes, there were times where I was being a little bit stupid here and there, naive. But I knew what to do. Like work hard. I had the, I had the backing from my family, my mom and dad. Do you know what I mean? Later on, my my family, my wife, my uncle, aunties, like they all guided me as to what needs to be done. Invested in the right areas. I can imagine maybe one or two players might fall into this issue where, you know, it they're, they're, they're just bad apples. I can understand that. Not everyone's the same. But to state the entire team to be under this Umbrella? I, I, I'm not buying that. I'm sorry. I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that. DOF, Poch is out of his depth. He ain't got it. Every team has issues, as Miz says. Instead of finding ways to win, Poch always looks for excuses. Another manager does better despite all obvious issues. Yeah, look, by, by success, we're not even saying win the Premier League. All we are saying is like, at least get, get to sixth. Are you saying this squad is not even good enough for sixth? Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? Aka, Aka, these men are millionaires and they've achieved nothing in football. Of course, they're lazy. They think they've made it. Is that what we really think about the entire squad? Well, Aka, Aka, newsflash for you, brother. Our owners, all they've done is buy young kids. I've seen grown adults throw a lot of tantrums as well, you know. I've seen grown adult players throw a lot of tantrums as well. Let's not forget Romelu Lukaku. Do you know what I mean? Like, let's not forget a player that I like so much, Hakim Ziyech, was also a bit of a problem for Chelsea Football Club. It's not it's not just our oh, young kids, they're all lazy. They didn't get to this top level being lazy, you know. They didn't become a Premier League player by being lazy. Not everyone can become a Premier League player. As I said. There might be some truth behind the fact that maybe some of them don't care. But I'm not going to sit here and expect. I'm not going to sit here and just think that the entire squad is like that. And Maurizio Pochettino just gets away with murder. I'm sorry. Ask whether Maurizio Pochettino fears his players maybe too much in their comfort zone to compete. He said, yes. Yes, I agree. It was one of the subjects we were talking about. Really? Aren't you the manager that comes at every post-match conference saying, this is the new Chelsea? This is the new Chelsea. Why are you now saying that they're, com they're comfortable? Why were you saying this is the new Chelsea then? Why? Why did you lie to the Chelsea fans to their face in the press conference? Why would you do that? 
And now you have the audacity to come out and say, oh, the players are too comfortable. Oh, I wonder why they're comfortable, man. You keep telling them that this is the new Chelsea. You keep telling them the yeah, patience. We are the fans that said, no, we need results now. Us fans wanted to maintain a standard. We've been demanding standard for the past two seasons and we're not been getting that. You as a manager getting directives from our sporting directors and our owners and consistently coming out in press conference and saying that this is the new Chelsea, we need to be patient, it's a process, it's a project. And now you have the audacity to come and say, oh yeah, players are very comfortable. They're in their comfort zone. Enough of that, man. Enough of that. Take responsibility. I'm sorry. You're showing every trait of being a Spursy manager. Full of excuses. Kuba, we got rid of every experienced person in the club. Even the directors are still being classed as potential great directors. Owners with no experience, players with no experience. Yeah, it's a mess. It's a mess. Mauricio Pochettino has questioned the meaning of potential. Insisting his Chelsea side must win today. I, I don't get this, brother. As he admitted, his players must improve their mentalities to do so. Not just the players. You as a manager need to improve your mentality. You can't even, you can't even have the authority to say publicly who your penalty taker is. You don't even have the authority to demand Cole Palmer to be the penalty taker, you yourself recently said, I can't, I can't force Cole. I can't force Palmer if he wants to give the ball away to Sterling. You yourself recently said that the team's tactic is pass it to Cole Palmer. Brother, you fix your mentality first. You as a manager have major flaws. You've been saying all along this is a new Chelsea, but all of a sudden you want to say win today. All of a sudden you want to talk about potential. Everything that we talked about as a fan base, all of a sudden now you want to flip-flop. You want to talk about potentials now. Why now? Why in April? Why in April you want to talk about potentials? You didn't know about the potentials when you joined the football club in the preseason. You didn't know about potentials. Preseason, you were talking about win today, win tomorrow, win day after tomorrow, win yesterday, win forever. And then you switched, you switched that conversation very quick. You kept on saying we need to we need to embrace the new Chelsea. This is the new Chelsea. Twelfth. And now all of a sudden you want to tell us Chelsea side must win today. You're a confused individual. You're a confused individual, Maritza Pochettino. You're a confused individual. Line Pride TV, LPTV, the players are full of potential. They just need a good manager to get the best out of them. Yeah. Milo K, because he's going to get re reviewed and sacked. I feel it. At this stage, like, there's no way. At this stage, there's no way he can stick around. Akaka, Aka, do you honestly think Pochettino's tactics are everyone past the Cole Palmer? Akaka, Aka, brother, I don't know. I don't know. Look, I appreciate how you like to play the devil's advocate. I appreciate that. But sometimes I think you just do it just for the sake of it. Why are you sitting there trying to support Poch? Po I'm not the one who's saying this. Poch himself has said, when the players are out of ideas, they just turn to Cole Palmer. Why are the players out of ideas, Akaka? Why are the players out of ideas? Who's giving them the ideas? 
Why should they be out of ideas? The manager should be providing them instructions. Please, bro, get with the program. This is not time to muck about, mate. Like, this is... This is not a comedy show. There is no need. There is no need to protect Pochettino. No need. Man has got us 12th. Man has got us 12th. He's had a preseason. He knew exactly what he was getting into. Man doesn't deserve any level of excuses. All we ever ask from Pochettino is, brother, just get us to Europa League. No, I mean the Champions League. Europa League. Aka, aka. Europa League. That's all we ever ask for. Do you know how pathetic that is? Do you know how pathetic that is? Champions League winners begging mercy. Please, Europa League spot. Forget Europa League. We can't even get into Conference League. Do you know how pathetic that is? And you're here trying to give counter-arguments for Pochettino. For what? For being 12th? If people don't have anything productive to say, it's better to keep quiet. Smarter. Smarter. It's not always about talking, 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 you know. Sometimes better to just listen and... Keep quiet. If you actually have something productive to put on the table, then do so. Otherwise, just running your mouth. There's no difference between you and Pochettino. <laughs> just running your mouth. Marvo, Poch needs to go. He doesn't even go to away fans and clap. That's bare minimum. He can't connect with the fans because he's super uh, Spurs product. Look. I'm not, I'm not, I guess I'm not a match going fan, so I'm not, I can't comment on that. I'm not huge. Even if I was a match going fan, I could care less about the manager coming and clapping. Blah, blah, blah. Who cares? I care less about your clapping. I don't give a damn about that. Go out there and perform. Yeah, of course, it'd be nice. It's a nice gesture, but that's not what I hinge on. I'm not going to take a slapping, six nil slapping, or, you know, whatever, like lose a Carabao Cup final. Be devastated or lose to a lose to a bunch of kids, Liverpool kids. Oh, now I'm gonna forget because you came down and then you clap. You clapped. I don't give a I don't give two cents about clapping. Shove your clap in the backside, mate. I don't care. You think when I'm working at my office and I'm underperforming, I just go to my manager. You think my manager's happy because I'm clapping at him. You think I'm underperforming? I go up to my manager and go, but he's going to look at me and he's going to say, are you feeling all right? You feeling okay? Hey, get yourself out of here, bro. Behave. Work harder. Clapping does nothing to me, man. Clapping does nothing. Pochettino, the demand to win is completely different. To prepare yourself to win every single game, you need to have experience to be mature, to know yourself and the people around you, why are, why we are in the process to build something. This I fully agree, of course. This I fully agree. But once again... Milo K, he's been awful when someone, someone's Enrique, we were told he had MSN, he wasn't good. Yeah. This particular information, this particular comment from Pochettino is spot on. There's no doubt about that. But did you, once again, I go back to the point. Did you not know this? Did you just come to this realization in April? What, what did you say in the interview? When, when the two directors and the owners, when they talk to you in the interview, telling, the, telling you the plan 
what the plan for the football club is. What was your response? What was the response? We as fans, we knew that experience was going to be a huge issue. We all knew that. But why didn't you say all of this in the January window? Okay, fine. You didn't say it last summer. You know, you just came into the club. You know, why didn't you voice your opinion during January? Saying that, hey, guys, we need some level of experience. What stopped you? Why are we still getting linked with more kids? Estaval William or whoever, you know, that, that player is. Why are we getting still linked with more kids? Why till now we've not been linked with a proper experienced play, player at the moment? January, we got linked with John Duran. We scored a good goal yesterday against Manchester City, but Poch, if, if this is how you really feel, then you need to speak out. You need to be very, very outspoken in the next window if you're there. If Pochettino is there as our manager next season, you need to speak out. You need to run the show. That EFC, thank you so much for the super uh, super chat. Big ups, Miz. Unless a miracle from God occurs, we will not be in Europe next season and a new manager will arrive this summer. Rinse and repeat. Yeah, look, um, I don't think we're going to be in Europe next season, so I'm not, I'm not holding my breath for that. Um, and I fully believe Pochettino is still going to be the manager next season. I'm, I'm pretty certain. Even though I don't want him to be, I'm fully certain he's going to be there. Paul Winsley, thank you so much for the super chat. Paul Winsley in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Pochettino is depreciating our assets. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, in regards to Mason Mount, breaking. Eric Ten Hag, I don't think Chelsea wanted to sell him. They wanted to keep him and offered him a new contract my, many times, but he wanted to make this step. Look. I'm fed up with all of this Mason Mount conversation, man. I really am. This is how I look at the situation. Both sides knew what they were doing. It's not one or the other. I hate how Mason Mount's PR team tries to make Chelsea look like villains. No. At the same time, I hate how sometimes Chelsea tries to make Mason Mount look like a villain. No. I think both, both sides knew what they were doing. Both sides knew... What had to be done? Mason Mount was was in a position of power. Mason Mount, 100%, he wanted more money. They may make it look like, oh, it's not about the money. No, come on. Believe me. As a footballer, your, your footballing career is not that long. You got to make all the money as possible. Of course, it was about the money as well. Of course, he probably did want to stay. He probably didn't want to leave. Of course. But on his term, he wanted to stay. Let's not forget that. Let's not make it paint a picture that, oh, no, nah, he wanted to stay. He didn't even want so much. He just wanted the bare minute. No, 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 no. Don't give me that bullshit. Mason Mount knew he was in the position of power. Mason Mount knew he only had final 12 months left in his contract. He knew he could go out on a free. And then Man United came and he's, he, he, he's an opportunistic person. Mason Mount saw the Man United opportunity and was on it. I think Arsenal were looking at him as well. You saw the way Mason Mount's father reacted. Don't you dare for one second tell me, oh no, he was forced out. Oh no, he was so forced out of Chelsea. Maybe he was. Maybe he was. Chelsea had the agenda as well. Chelsea wanted to get rid of him because Chelsea needed the money. Or else we would have been in a bigger hole. We're already in a massive hole already from a financial fair point, play point of view. 
And in essence, I think the I think I think the I think the sale of the player has worked out. The player has been rubbish. The player has been rubbish for two seasons. So I don't know what people are complaining about. I think this was a actually a masterstroke. As I said, it won't be long until we see Mason Mount play for an Everton or a or a West Ham very soon. I think I think the club did really well to get rid of him and get the money, good money out of it. We invested on Cole Palmer. We got the player, we got the kind of player that we wanted. Cole Palmer is everything that we wanted. You know, from from a young player's point of view. Similarly with Kai Havertz. Good we sold. We made the money and we moved him on. Yeah, okay, he's doing well at Arsenal. Kudos to him. He wasn't doing well at Chelsea. Now, that's the bigger question, I suppose. Why don't players play better at Chelsea? Why do they always go elsewhere and do well? But in Mason Mount's case, it's not even a conversation. Mason Mount scores one goal against Brentford... All of a sudden, we made a mistake. Both sides had their agendas. Both sides knew what they were doing. Chelsea needed to sell players to make the money, pure profit. And Mason Mount was looking for a better offer and a lucrative offer and was very opportunistic as well at the same time. Let's not act like, oh, it's just a one-way street here. We did... Mason Mount dirty. No, 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 no. No one did no one dirty here. The right decision was made. The right and the most excellent decision was made. Now, the issue will be if Mason Mount puts the dagger in us at Stamford Bridge. That will hurt if Mason Mount somehow either scores a winner or a late equalizer or whatever the case is. That will hurt. But it is what it is. It is what it is. We'll see how the reception is going to be for Mason Mount. I fully expect booze. I do not expect anything less. I fully expect booze for Mason Mount at Stamford Bridge. He plays for Man United. No need. No need for any love. I'm sorry. So, yeah. That, that's how I feel about the whole situation. I don't think it's one or the other side. I think both sides knew exactly what they're doing. Hajj, this club was purchased in third place and a UCL quarterfinal since Clown Lake have come in. We have been second page of the table and out of Europe. This is all that I need to see Clown Lake out. Unfortunately, they're going to be here for the next eight seasons. DLM Perplex, big up Miz. What if Mount scores a hat-trick in a 3-0 win at Bridge? At least then we would fan pressure force Poch sacking. Yeah, imagine that. A Mount Hattrick, oh my God. That would be mad. Chelsea Empire, if we lose and our match-going fans take it, I don't do anything. We are done. Akaka, the last thing I'll say is this. Player pride must kick in. Don't play for Poch. Don't play for the batch. Play for your own pride fakes. I've always said, play for your own reputation. Your own reputation is getting damaged. Play for your own reputation. But... At the moment, very hard to motivate a group of players who are consistently in a mediocre position all the time. It is demoralizing. Very, very demoralizing. Put yourself in that environment. Very difficult to motivate yourself. But this is where you need a manager that can galvanize you. That can make you believe. But all of these conversations are too late now. It's too late for all of these conversations. The manager should have sensed all of this danger a long time ago. The red flags were already there from way back. And he should have been on top of it from the get-go. The manager allowed for this shit show to continue and now he expects change in April? Come on, man. Season's coming to an end. Behave. DOF, energy is one thing, tactics is another. We, when we won at Camp Nou in 2012, how often did we have to run? 
It was defensive tactical masterclass games and approaches to games must vary, not just running. Look, this whole running thing, it's another way to get us sidetracked from the real issues. It's not just about the running. Running may be an issue, maybe. But let's not fool around. We watch, we are watching Chelsea. It's not because they don't run. It's because they look clueless. They're not positioned well. Their structure, organization is pathetic. That's why. You think we are conceding goals because we don't run? What's running got to do with set piece defending? What's running got to do when crosses are coming in and our defenders are don't know exactly who to mark? What's running got to do with that? Please. Bruno Rebellis, thank you so much for the super chat. Miz, I swear if we sign kids again, these directors and owners will pay. They won't hide all the talk about Nkunku and Lavia being our savior. Yeah, it's mad. It's mad. All right, ladies and gentlemen, give me your score prediction. I can't be bothered doing um, team selection. I, I couldn't care less. Look, put whoever you want to put. I don't really care. I don't care who Pochettino puts out in his starting 11. It doesn't really bother me one bit. Um, so I'm not going to do a, a uh, team selection. I can't be bothered doing a team selection. Because it doesn't matter, man. It really doesn't matter. It does not matter who you put. Give me some of your score prediction. I'm thinking I'm thinking 2-2. Two, two. Draw, maybe. Possibly a loss. I can't see how we win. I don't think we're good enough to win. I can see a 2-2 draw. That's my score prediction. If anything, maybe a loss, a 2-1 loss. Um, yeah, because Man United, they're just a jammy, jammy team, man. Man United is a jammy team. Let's see what you guys are saying. Ren saying 2-1 United win. That can happen. 2-1 Chelsea. Yeah, I can't say. Look, I, I want to be surprised. I want to be surprised. I want to be surprised. Mount Stunner 2-1. Hoping for a draw, nil-nil, both teams missing loads of chances. Yeah, I don't know about Man United missing chances. Man, Man United, for some reason, they know how to put things away against us. Draw, lost, miss 2-1. 2-1 Chelsea, 2-3 Maguire hat trick. Oh, my days. <laughs> I'm going to end the poll. 267 votes. We have 40% saying Man United win, 32% saying draw. A very small percentage of 28% saying Chelsea win. So people in the fan base are not really that confident. All right, we're going to wrap things up. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Smash the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. I shall see you guys for the watch along one and a half hours before kickoff. Make sure you're there. If you're a member of the channel, make sure you're there. We'll have a members call in. Just prior to the match starting, about 40 minutes before the match starts, we'll have a members call in. If you're not a member, become a member. The link is in the description. Give me your thoughts, your opinions as we build up to the game. And uh, let's pray. Let's pray and see. Uh, either it's going to be a joyful end at the end or we are going to be disappointed again. Until next time, everyone. Take care. See ya.